Hello, let's talk about API program governance. What is governance? And more importantly, how would that apply to your API program? Governance is defined as to rule and control. But in our fast-paced environment, where innovation is key to attaining that competitive edge, heavyweight ruling can control or slow down things. And slowing things down, progress can be impeded. Governance, when applied to the API first model, is a balancing act. We need to manage risk while enabling speed and agility in order to meet the consumer's needs. We don't want heavyweight authority, control, or regulation, and this is why we call it a little g. Finding the balance depends on your organization, startup versus traditional enterprise, risk appetite versus speed requirement. Let's talk about the keys to managing risk while still maintaining the ability to meet market needs. The balance comes from an intersection of four components. First are the key roles within an API team. Second is the structure of the team focused on the digital initiative. Third is the ownership of the API products. And the fourth and final component are the simple guidelines and structures around the platform for ease of adoption. As mentioned in the previous video around API team composition, it is essential to have an API team leader who is aligned with both the business and IT. This role is called the API product owner, and it is a key component to ensuring that the APIs built target a priority business outcome. Central team defines API development standards and developed APIs based on the requirements from product, project, and business unit teams. This model allows for consistency in development, approach, and adherence. However, this model lacks the agility that some of the other models have. A decentralized operating model has the agility and the speed, but lacks the standards and common development best practices. This, combined with a lack of clear ownership after the APIs are released, showcases how different this model is compared to that of the centralized model. So now we arrive at the hybrid model. This model possesses the speed and agility of the decentralized model while also maintaining a close adherence to standards. The downside is that a lot of coordination is needed when it comes to the requirements across multiple teams. So who owns which APIs? Ownership of the APIs, or the components that make up those APIs, is dependent upon the operating model. For example, in a hybrid model, the platform team is responsible for setting guidelines, standards, and the reusable assets. Reusable assets are in the form of shared flows or shared services that adhere to a common practice such as security, traffic management, or error handling. This frees up the specific product, project, and business unit teams to focus on APIs supporting their business objectives. Delivery can be much faster when the teams don't have to worry about the standards for common assets. Reusable assets can be selected from an a la carte menu to include in the delivery team's API product. Big G governance is what most companies end up with. This assumes that the teams are not trusted to do the right thing and results in heavy gating. Committees like change approval boards are formed to manually audit any change that are pushed to deployed systems. Policies and procedures are written into heavyweight Word documents, and teams are split by function as they are not trusted to work together. Little g governance is harder for an organization to swallow as responsibility and accountability is pushed down to where the decision needs to be made. It provides enough governance to keep the teams on the right path, but doesn't seek to slow delivery. Now let's run through an analogy of a freeway. While you're on a freeway, the direction is set, but can be changed at junctions. Guardwells help keep cars on the right side of the road and traveling safely in the right direction. Lanes are painted to suggest the right way to drive, but can be crossed if needed. The emphasis here is on keeping the flow. Now imagine if Big G governance was in control. Every time you needed to accelerate, slow down, change lanes, or even change direction, someone else would need to have to review that decision and approve it for you. Now imagine what that would do to traffic. Little g governance provides standards, principles, and best practices. Teams are trusted and empowered through tooling and automation. Information and documentation is shared collaboratively. Teams are cross-functional to minimize handoff and communication issues. Going back to the freeway analogy, little g governance operates how we think of freeways today. Organizations have hierarchy. What tends to happen is that we push information to authority. The people at the bottom have the information, 
but they don't have the authority to make the decision. This results in bottlenecks and delays. We create systems that channel information up, where a decision is then taken, and then that information comes back down again. As you can imagine, this tends to take a lot of time. An alternative is pushing authority to the information. The foundation for this model is making sure that the people that are closest to the information are both technically competent and have organizational clarity. They understand the priorities and know what the right thing to do. They are empowered to make the decisions, and as a result, they are happier for it. If your organization is truly undergoing a digital transformation, it is deeper than building a mobile app or putting some APIs on a developer portal. Think about why your company started this initiative in the first place. If the benefits include reducing costs and accelerating time to market, then the initiative has to go well beyond that of just building APIs. To achieve those aims, imposing a heavyweight process that encourages blind compliance with no room to accelerate delivery will at best slow or at worst stop the benefits of the program. To achieve those aims, imposing a heavyweight process that encourages blind compliance with no room to accelerate delivery will at best slow or at worst stop the benefits of the program. Much of the time, governance processes are imposed top-down and born out of quick resolutions to problems encountered. The gates imposed often have documentation required at each stage, which are slow to produce and discourage effective communication between teams. Ultimately, the focus is on the process protecting the organization from the IT teams who they don't trust to do the right thing. This is done so rather than accelerating business outcomes in a safe manner. So how do we apply this to the API governance model? If a centralized team have all the authority, then we can't scale and agility is inhibited. We must give developers publishing or consuming APIs the information and knowledge they need to publish and use those APIs. Thank you.